This is Sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. I'm gonna shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. It was so funny because you know, when I was thinking about the first time you met Doc Gooden, you know? <laughs> I had to laugh because it was so funny. You know, it was like there's y'all phenom picture. I said, where? They said, we was in the club. And it was like he's right over there at the bar. I said, where? They went to the bar. First time I met Harold, he came over and said, "How you doing, Doc? How you doing?" I said, "Good." And I was hammered. And he was hammered. He was had his head down on the bar. Sleeping, and I was like, he's gonna be a spring trainer. And then the next year, we became good friends once I made the team and everything. But I actually met in a bar, so there's no coincidence that what happened down the road off the field. Wow, man, that's just a clip from one of the ma- most amazing. First of all, ESPN's 30 for 30 series to me is at the top of the totem pole when it comes to doc documenting people's life experiences, tying it in with their work, their jobs, whatever it may be. Um, showing what the adversity that people face because they're celebrities, we think they're invincible, and you find out that they're human just like you or anybody else. Doesn't matter what tax bracket you're in, you still face issues every single day. They do a great job of documenting that, and there's a new uh, 30 for 30, Doc and Daryl, about the lives of former New York Mets players, Dwight Gooden, who's been on this show. He's yeah. a citizen of Sway in the Morning, and Daryl Strawberry, who's also a citizen a of Sway, Sway in the, the Morning. morning. And Daryl Strawberry <laughs> is here with us right now, ladies Look and gentlemen. Him. No doubt. All right. <laughs> Hold up, D. Thanks for having me. Man, <laughs> come on, man. Let me give some of the accolades in case you forgot. Eight All-Star Games, four-time World Series champion, National League Rookie of the Year, two-time Silver Slugger, uh, National League Home Run Leader. I mean, he's done it all, ladies and gentlemen. Daryl Strawberry is here. That's love. Yeah, man. The only problem, (laughs) the only issue I have with his career. What? What's that? He's played for the New York Mets, the New York Nan- uh, Yankees, the Dodgers, and the Giants. Okay. <laughs> I'm from Oakland, and he's oh, never played God. for the Oakland oh, Athletics. Come on, man. You got to bring Oakland in every conversation. O-Town. Absolutely. Yeah. Dinos. <laughs> Absolutely. That would have been great. Play for the Giants. Jealous. Right. <laughs> yeah, man. So, Daryl, how you been, man? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm just glad to be here. Thanks for having me, man. This is, this is pretty cool. Anytime someone says Daryl Strawberry uh, is available to come on your show, what idiot would say no? Right. It's Daryl Strawberry. I mean, the name alone is hip hop. Yeah. yeah. Like D Strawberry, D Straw. (laughs) You know, like you could go into a breakdance circle if you wanted to. There you go. I made my own rap song one day. Well, if you do, we'll. I've already been there. Yeah, you've been there, right? Yeah, Yeah, man. man. You rap, you rap, right? Bars. Chocolate Strawberry. That's right. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. (laughs) That's fire. Only on Sway in the morning, you, yo. you remember any early bars you used to spit? Like any lyrics of... Um... No, I, didn't, I, I don't remember. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> So convenient. <laughs> well, you know, I was a big fan back in the days of Curtis Blow, you know. Oh, yeah. These Clap are the breaks. Yeah, yeah. Everybody. Yeah, you, know. you, you got, got what it takes. takes. Hey, because I'm Curtis Blow and I want you to know. Go go these are the breaks. Yeah. Clap your hands. Hold on. You got what it takes. Hey, because I'm Curtis Blow and I want I want you to know that these are the brains. Hey. <laughs> okay, all right. Really, there we go. There we go. There we go. That's what I'm talking about, man. Um, you know, one of the things about 30 for 30, uh, Cootie and Chike, a good friends of mine, have yeah. produced some um, 30 for 30s in the past. And I was just, um, they did a Muhammad Ali one. Um, um, I believe I was a part of something with that as well. But this, when you agree to do this, it's almost like you agree to go to therapy. Oh, wow. Because these series are the most revealing series I've seen on TV. Mm-hmm. Um, when you were first asked about doing 30 for 30, what thoughts went through your mind? Well, I, w- I had to think about it. I had to pause for a minute because my dear friend Gary Green, mm-hmm. who lives here in New York City, I've known for a long time, and you know he owns the AAA team in Omaha and he owns the AA team in Richmond. He's a real baseball man. And uh, we he knows me and Doc well. Mm-hmm. And... He's been a big part of, you know, our life and helping us, you know, come back and turn things around in our life. He's always been there, been a dear friend, never asked for nothing, you know, just loved us because he was a Met fan, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, and he thought highly of us. And he approached me with this, and I said I would do it if it's raw okay, and if mm-hmm. it's real. Mm-hmm. You know, because like you were just talking about 30 for 30, uh, they do films that 
are revealing. Yeah. And you have to be able to go in there and you have to be able to reveal your life. Mm-hmm. You, can, you can't be, well, I did a little bit of this, I did a little bit of that, you know. And because I, I wanted to lay it all out, because I'm not that person today, but I wanted to lay it all out who I was back then. I, when I was young, I was rich, I was a heathen, I was a womanizer, I was an alcoholic, drug addict. I got addicted to amphetamines. I got addicted to coke. I, I got addicted to shooting heroin. I, all, all and above. Uh-huh. And this needs to be shown if they want a short story, because everybody wants to talk about uh, Doc and Daryl, but they don't know where we come from. Uh-huh. You know, they don't know the dysfunction of your life. My father was an alcoholic, beat me, told me I never amount to nothing. So my pain led me to my greatness, and my greatness led me to my destructive behavior. Mm. Wow. Whoa. Let that breathe for a second. <laughs> oh, right. Damn. Mm. My pain led me to my greatness, and my greatness led me to my destructive behavior. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I didn't know you were beaten and told you wouldn't amount to nothing by your father. Yeah, well, it was the time. But most people don't know, 13 years old, you know, when he came home from the last time on when he was drunk and it was, you know, bullying our mom. We woke up in the middle of the night. My old brother Mike told him, get out. He pulls out a shotgun. He says, I'm going to kill the whole family. We went into action. Me and Ronnie, because we've been beaten by him. So Ronnie goes and grabs a butcher knife. I go grab a fire pan. Mike grabs a bat. So we came close to killing him that night. Could have been a tragedy before I even ever put on the uniform. See, I was already scarred before I put on the uniform. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When I walked on the field, I was already scarred. Uh-huh. So my acting out and my, my displays of life was real because I was in pain, uh-huh. you know, and from, from this man, well, why didn't he love me? Why, did, why wasn't I important to him? Uh-huh. And I carried that for a very long time until uh-huh. like three years ago when I went down him went down to him because my life changed and the Lord is with my life and I went down here and the Lord told me go Ask my father to forgive me. To forgive you. Talk about to talk about that. Um, the psychology in that. To ask yeah. your father to forgive you for Cause, what? Because two wrongs don't make a right. Yeah. Mm. So I kept him out of my whole life, career. Mm-hmm. Didn't mm-hmm. let him be a part of another. None of my fame and fortune. And I was the forgiveness part of that wasn't for him. The forgiveness part was for me. Mm-hmm. Right. So I can heal. Uh-huh. See, because for forgiveness is not about the other person. It's about you, yourself, to be able to heal. Uh-huh. Because I have to remember, I fell short too. Yeah. So we can't always look at people falling short because we don't really know where they come from. Uh-huh. You know, my father saw his father as an alcoholic. He was the only child. Come to know his father was an alcoholic, and he basically beat his mom to death. That's what he saw. So that's all he knew. Uh-huh. How has that affected your relationship with your father affected your relationship with, with as a father with your children. Well, my first two children, I mean, I, I mean, I had to go back and make amends to the women I hurt, mm-hmm. you know, in my first two marriages because I was wrong. I was selfish, self centered, mm-hmm. you know, and that's what the film talks about how sick a person gets, and it's all about him. And you know, I was a liar, cheater. You know, I cheated mm-hmm. on him, and you know, womanized. You know, other women. You know, being married to them, and that wasn't right because mm-hmm. you know, I thought, you know. I'm Daryl Strober. I can yeah. do what I want. So my relationship with my first two children was very hard, you know, because they saw all that. Mm. By my, but my other three, tr- four children, they didn't see that, so they're good. I got six, you know, total together. Uh-huh. They didn't see that, so they're good. You know, it's my older two that have been affected more than anything. You know, my relationship has been strange with them for, and I'm praying, you know, that it will come back, you know, okay. because I am yeah. their father regardless, you know. Yeah. They love me, but they don't know me. Uh-huh. You know, they know me from because they were young. You know, my daughter Diamond uh-huh. and, and my son DJ, you know, um, he plays uh, basketball over in the European League, Greece and stuff like that. And uh-huh. me and him relationship come back. My youngest daughter, she was on the love and hip hop, and she was – out there in this world, you know, doing things. And, uh-huh. and I still love her right where she at because none of us should judge a person no matter uh-huh. where they at, you know. And, and, and I learned that with my kids too. So my relationship is coming back with my kids. My old, other kids are great, you know. They never seen me yeah. in that kind of lifestyle. They, all they've seen is my their dad has been, you know, he's a preacher, he's this and that, you know, and he's, uh-huh. he's got treatment centers and he's helping people. That's all they ever seen. They never seen the destructive behavior of the older two. Uh, had to see. They saw uh-huh. how destructive I, I was and the things I was doing as an athlete and, and believing that, you know, I have the right to do it because, you know, I pay the bills. Yeah. Right. yeah. You know? Ooh, yeah, I get right. it. I fell into that mentality before because I pay the bills. Don't say nothing to me. Exactly. Diamond, um, in, in, on, in on Love and Hip Hop, you can see her in these dysfunctional relationships and, you know, how she's navigating through her life. Um, do... And God bless her. She's a beautiful um, person, and 
you know, like you say, you can't judge. But when you look at your daughter on TV and you see these dysfunctional situations play out, do you blame yourself? Of course. Mm-hmm. Th- that's why you know, that that plays a major part in your kid's life. Mm-hmm. Hey, we don't think that when we're in the midst of doing what we're doing. You know, if I'm married and I'm out there cheating, messing with other women, and, and you know, and, and, and being a heathen, mm-hmm. you know, that's going to affect my children. Yeah. You know, and it has affected my children. Mm-hmm. You know, because I I shouldn't live like that. That's not being a man. Mm-hmm. You know, and I realize that. You know, and and I regret that. I regret that. You know, and and that's why uh, the addiction part of my life and the cycle became so crazy because I regretted a lot of things. I regretted the fact that I hurt my kids. I didn't care about the fame, the fortune, the money. You, you know, I was a baseball player, but I wasn't a man. Yeah. You know, and I always wanted to be a man because my father wasn't that. Been that's where the scars left me. It left me empty inside, and that's why drugs. Drugs came along in my life, and drugs fulfilled me to allow me to escape from the reality of being a man. And I always wanted to be a man. Mm. Did the MLB offer any help at all at that time? Did they have like platforms or you know, I don't know, um, meetings or counselors or anything? Not at that time. Yeah, I mean, because because mm. drugs were around the game as soon as I stepped to the big leagues. I got introduced in 1983, uh, my first road trip. I got introduced on cocaine on the back of the plane oh, shit, and damn. at 21 you know that was my introduction to welcome to the big leagues wow. so that's what i thought it was all about so do you think there's a drug problem or at least then the drug there was a drug problem in the mlb well, that wasn't being addressed i think it was all it, drug problems in sports are always there okay you know it's yeah. not just mlb it's everywhere you know it's, yeah. you know i got addicted to the amphetamines at the young age you know 1986 i got addicted to amphetamines and i couldn't stop taking them i had to take them every night for the rest of my career because I got addicted to them, uh-huh. you know, because I, you know, you have addictive personality, you know, and, you know, this is what's going around, you know, every, you know, this is the way this life is, you know, it, it looks good. It looks great from a distance where everybody see, yeah. you know, the fame, the fortune, uh-huh. you make millions of dollars, but in it is a lot of, it's, 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 when you in it and you plan in it, it's very toxic, you know, uh-huh. because the lifestyle, you could do what you want. Nobody ever tells you no. Yeah. Nobody tells you. No. Nobody tells strawberry. You. I'm not. Yeah, man. You can ask me for a, a, a Molly right now. I ain't gonna tell you no. Yeah. You know what I mean. <laughs> um, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta get out. You, you gotta get out of the group if you say no. If you say you know? right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I can't hang out with you. Yeah. I can't. Re- I can't pick up all the crumbs because I know you have bitches. Yeah. And so, <laughs> you know, I'm just joking. Man. <laughs> I know D had ladies. So, hey, man. Oh, don't get me wrong. Yeah, I, yeah, my no. man. Hey, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm changed now, but yeah. I, yeah, yeah. You got well. You married. got a woman now. Now, right. Yeah. 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 Married, yeah. You got married, married and and um, married, blessed. You know, yeah. in ministry, got treatment centers helping people. Yeah. Beautiful. But in those days, you know, I was a real heathen. Yeah, I had women everywhere. Yeah. Because I I, I felt like, well, this is the major leagues, mm-hmm. and this is what they say you can have. So I wanted it. Mm-hmm. And little did I know that it would lead me to the destructive behavior of of my greatness. Yeah. You know, from my ball plan, that life, because I never got sleep. Uh-huh. I really didn't realize how good I was as a player. You know, I would go out every night, get in maybe five, six in the morning sometime, get up the next day, play, hit two home runs like it was nothing. Because I was a baseball player. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But on the other side, I was I was not a man. It's, it's something I always really strive for to be. And I, that, I think that's what uh, brings you to the greater place and greater understanding and purpose of life when you find that. And I didn't find that in my baseball career. What was your lowest point you think that you could think of, like a moment that you could see right now? I think my lowest point was, um, you know, sticking a needle in my arm and shooting dope, shooting heroin. Yeah. You know, because I, I, I was smoking crack. I went from cocaine to smoking crack, and I went to shooting dope. Yeah. You know, and I, I something I said I would never do. Uh-huh. You know, I saw myself sticking a needle on my arm, shooting dope, and here it is, you know, I'm thinking to myself, you know, I've had all this success, now what's wrong with me? Yeah. Mm. Well, you yeah. embarrassed because pe- you, people start calling you a bum, you know what I mean? They start yeah. calling you all sorts of names in public, and how was were you embarrassed or you just didn't care? No, I wasn't embarrassed because addiction is real, and yeah. I think people don't understand addiction. We we look at a person in, from the perspective of what their ability is to play sports, but not to be, we, we don't know what's wrong with a person. Yeah. You know, and, and you never should judge someone that's that's strung out and dick because you don't know what happened to them. You mm-hmm. don't know what scars were left in them that led them down some dark roads like that. Because I see it every day in my treatment centers. My treatment centers got seventy five 
patients in there, and they're all addicted to something, you know, mm-hmm. and they're struggling, you know, they're struggling with what's going on inside. And it's not until you you deal with what's going on. So it's not about what people think. My my perception was never about what people thought about me because they always talked about me. They talked about me when I was doing good. They talked about me when I was doing bad. Yeah, yeah. I, so yeah. I, I learned to deal with that. You, mm-hmm. you you play in New York, you better learn to deal. You got to learn to deal with it. I deal with that every day, man. I, I feel you do. You know, you're from Oaktown, you know, so yeah. yeah, yeah. He's from, I know how to deal with it. Don't get me yeah, wrong, man. I know, you know. I know. Because I'm from the coast, too. You know, I'm from you, L.A., you so. Know, oh, that's, okay, you know what it, throw up your W's, Z strong. Yeah. Man, you know? <laughs> that's a crooked W. That W is horrible. Yeah, All right, go yeah. to DB. Hey, I'm DB. Uh, I saw the documentary, and uh, I wanted to ask because uh, by the end of it, it kind of shows where you guys are right now in your life and you seem to be doing good because you have your wife to kind of you know keep you balanced and keep you on track and doing good doc seemed like he might not have that in his life and i wanted to know did you get a chance to talk with him afterwards and maybe find out where he's at and how he's doing well i don't ask questions you know because i love him and that's what people taught me is to love me right where i was at no Ooh. matter what because if we judge a person we're, we'll run a person off and I think you know struggles are real, and addiction is real, and and I've learned working in this field and dealing with people that uh, never put yourself above them because you're doing better than they they are, because for the grace of God there go I, because mm-hmm. that was me, you know, in that in that same place of life, you know, struggling trying to find my way. So you know when I look and I think I think my hope is that you know he will reconnect with you know what's important in his life more than anything. He's got to get rid of. Whatever he's struggling, I don't know where he's at, but whatever is holding him and hindering him from getting on the other side, he needs to get rid of uh, people, places, and things, and he needs, he needs to try a new way of life with new friends who who care about him being Dwight, not Dwight Gooden, the Major League Baseball player. You mm-hmm. know, because the because if you never get to the place of taking that uniform off, you'll never get well. Too many of us. Uh, run around and hang on with the uniform still on, but we're not playing no more, but we still, I played for this, I played for that, you know. Yeah. That That is old, that's done, you know, and and, and, and my hope and prayer for him is is that he, that he find that if he's struggling and he gets there and he knows I'm here. Gary brought me and Dwight back together in this film. Yeah, that's and, how it happened? Yeah, he okay. brought us back together. Did y'all used to get high together? No, we didn't get high together. Okay. That's okay. one thing we didn't do. We didn't get high together. Okay, all right. Um, we did a lot of other things together. We, get, we didn't get, get high. Yeah. Threesomes and stuff like that? Yeah, you know. <laughs> okay, okay, all right, cool. All right, uh, we got fours. <laughs> we got fours. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> we got fours on the <laughs> We got fours on the line from L.A. Fours, what up, man? What up, Fours? What up, Sway? What, what up, up Heather? Hey. What up, Tracy? Hello. What's up, Star? What's up, man? What's going on? How you doing, man? Long time. What's up with you? I'm doing it, man. You in L.A.? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. I just wanted to give you a shout out, bro. All right. I've seen your journey, man, and uh, I see I see where you're at today, and I just salute you, my brother. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate that. How's everything down there in the jungle of L.A.? Oh, uh, man, you know, it's good. It's very good. You know, Mom asked about you a few weeks ago. This is a and childhood I told her friend. about your ministry. Yeah. And uh, she want to come hear you speak, man. So next time you're in the area, you need to uh, touch it up with me and let me know. I will. I'll let you know next time I'm coming out there to preach, man. I'll put you on hold there, uh, uh, Forrest. That's your childhood friend? Forrest, yeah. Yeah. Forrest, yeah. Okay, cool. We got Michelle on the, um, uh, well, hold on, that's, um. I'm uh, glad he knew him. Yeah, <laughs> this is. <laughs> Forrest Dillard. That sounded crazy. Yeah, he's uh, across the street neighbor. Oh, you know really? what, um. You know, I know Daryl has to, he has to go to his next interview. Wow. All right, man. But look, 30 for 30, uh, Doc and Daryl is tonight, 9 p.m. ESPN. Just in the, the minutes we've been speaking here alone, it's worth for everyone to sit down Can't and see. Wait. It's not about baseball. It's about people mm-hmm. who play baseball and what they went through in their lives while they were playing baseball, but even prior and uh, since. And uh, it shows the whole trajectory, you know. And I commend you, man. Thanks. I've always been a fan. <laughs> I've always thanks. been a fan. Yeah, yeah. All right? Well, thanks. And I you, appreciate you're it. You're officially a citizen. A sway in the morning. So you wear that with pride, man. Sway in the morning. Man, citizen, I, brother. There you go. You get a lot of perks from that, too, man. Uh, Daryl Strawberry, ladies and gentlemen. Later <laughs> in the show, we got the one and only Eve. And then we also have Little Dirt coming by. Here's a song you may not have heard before. It's by the one and only Chocolate Strawberry. Sway in the morning. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> it's Sway in the morning. Only on Shea 45.
Kilo.